Welcome back, friends, and thank you for joining me on day 13 with Peak Flix. Today you will need your Bizarre Animals book, sticky notes, and a pencil. Our objective for today is that we will demonstrate our understanding of a nonfiction text by making inferences, by reading Bizarre Animals and drawing conclusions. Today we're going to be inferring. Today you're going to use your schema, which is what you already know, text evidence to make an inference, a new conclusion, a new idea. When we infer, we're going to use clues that the author gives us and our own background knowledge to understand what the text is really saying. We're going to be asking ourselves questions such as, what does the text tell me? What do I already know about this topic? And then we're going to come up with our own inference. It's important that you take time to stop and think, to think about what you already know, to use the evidence that the author is presenting you with, and to continue to develop new ideas after reading some new information. I wanted to show you a quick example of how to make an inference with page 40 titled The Power of Adaptation. Before I read this, I'm going to think back of what I already know about adaptations. Well, I know that adaptation is when an animal evolves. Now I'm going to begin reading and I'm going to start thinking about what is the author teaching me? What is the text evidence to support and add on to my prior knowledge? Animals don't decide to evolve. Adaptations happen randomly inside a creature's DNA. DNA is a set of instructions found in every cell. Those instructions tell organisms how they should grow and act. Some changes in the DNA make animals weaker. Other changes make animals stronger. A slightly longer neck may make it easier to reach food. Larger eyes may mean it's easier to find prey and larger ears can help an animal hear danger and escape more quickly. Over time, small changes add up to a new species. They may look strange, but for these bizarre animals, these adaptations are the difference between life and death. Red-eyed tree frogs are good climbers with feet and toes adapted to their lifestyle. Now that I finished reading, I'm going to think, what can I infer? So in my sticky note, I can infer that animals evolve and so do their DNA. Sometimes these DNA, these changes can strengthen an animal or weaken it. So after reading, I learned and I've added my prior knowledge to come up with the inference that I know that DNA can sometimes help an animal or hurt an animal. Now I would like for you to give it a try. To make an inference, continue reading Bizarre Animals. And as you read, think about what do I know already? What did I learn? What does this mean? And then jot it down in a sticky note. And remember to reflect on your reading stamina and behaviors and to complete today's exit ticket. And now let's move on to our writing workshop. Today you will need your writer's notebook, pencil, and your Bizarre Animals book. Our objective for today is that we will draw conclusions by writing a flyer stating why guests should visit our Bizarre Animal Zoo. Today you're going to draw conclusions to form an opinion and decide something. You're going to use your background knowledge, some of the facts and details you've already learned in Bizarre Animals, and come up with a new conclusion. You're going to then check your conclusion by asking, is this a logical choice? Are, there, are my facts accurate? Remember to use what you already know to figure out what people will do or say. Today, you're going to draw conclusions on should zoos exist? Before we get started, I wanted to share these opinions that some may have about zoos. Should zoos still exist? Should we really still be caging animals for our entertainment? Or do zoos serve another purpose? Do they really contribute to the cons conservation of endangered animals? Here's a flyer asking people not to visit zoos, saying, caged is cruelty. Imagine life in jail. And then there's a statement in the bottom saying, animals in confinement spent their days unable to engage in any semblance of a normal life. The night to freedom will frequently exhibit signs of sucosis and will pace bar back and forth, gnaw on their cage bars, sway, or perform other repetitive behaviors. 
These behaviors, easily observed at any animal confinement facility, are signs of emotional distress or anxiety that result from being unable to adapt to captivity. This is a boycott of animal abuse, telling people not to visit facilities that hold animals captive. I wanted to share this opinion with you because it's important to have these facts before drawing a conclusion to make a flyer persuading guests to come to your zoo. Here is another flyer with pros and cons to opening a zoo. Do they have a place? Do zoos still have a place in the world? Zoos can educate the public and foster an appreciation for other species. Animals in captivity suffer from boredom, stress, and confinement. Removing individuals from their natural habitat endangers the wild population. Zoos can save endangered species by bringing them into a safe environment. The vast majority of captive breeding programs do not release animals back into the wild. So, to write a flyer, here is a template that many will use. You want to have a headline with a brief statement, some images or photographs and links with direct quotations, and it could either be from a scientist, a zoologist, or even a regular civilian. So you could see two examples asking people to come visit a zoo, such as the Australian, the Australia Zoo, and also in the Animal World Zoo, actually listing all the reasons why zoos are a pro for animals and for humans. So I would like for you to give it a try. In your notebook, first assign a flyer, then create a headline. Write a short statement convincing the reader to visit your zoo. You may include photographs, images, facts about your animals, and a positive quote. And remember to reread, edit, and revise your writing, and complete today's exit ticket. Until next time, everyone.